It's our culture as a ministry to open up our first service with the prophetic word. So many people outside. Those outside, can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Psalm 8 from verse 4 to 6. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. Verse 5 says, For you have made him a little lower than the angels. The word there is God, Elohim. And has crowned him with glory and honor. 6. Thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, that thou hast put all things under his feet. Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, Please look up, everyone. We have limited time. God is a God of times and seasons. He dwells in light, but his dealings with men is fragmented into times and seasons. Listen carefully. That means for every season, there is what God is doing. Are we together? And the character of his operation is that there are graces and distributions of spiritual possibilities allocated for seasons that follow his word it looks like he's following men but it follows his word is because the men receive his word that's why it follows them the power of god does not follow men it follows his word and if that word is in men it will seem to follow men are we together now so for every season there is what god is doing it is important for you to understand this because this is where many people miss out. If, good to see you guys. Let me start using you up front. Now watch this. In 2019, there is a grace and a spiritual allocation. Are we together now? In 2020, watch this. It does not cancel this grace. In addition to it, there is now a supply of another dimension that necessitates that this season reflects the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So God is a God of times and seasons. I'm saying this because um, now I love the body of Christ, but there are people who believe that prophetic words are just a church thing. It is not true. It is not true. Prophetic words guide operations of the spirit in the earth. On the fifth day of the seventh day, God did this. The word of the Lord came. It ties time to it. On the seventh day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. So God is a God of times and seasons. Now, the way God works, please look up again. Globally, there is what God is doing. Ah, my God. I'm seeing a dove resting on five people. One, two, three four five you're my glory the lifter up of my hands please sit down we have to rush now understand this globally there is what the spirit of god is doing across the earth and then territorially there is what god is doing the hand of the lord is upon this fair lady my dear i'm seeing an angel pour oil on you and the lord is saying to tell you he's giving you beauty for ashes he's giving you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness please bring for me the person who will run out by the anointing now just the hand of god is resting on someone i just saw an angel of the lord move don't worry we are going to walk with time we'll not stay unnecessarily late i saw a grace just one person running by the spirit The Lord is bringing restoration to you, my dear. The Lord is saying he's bringing restoration, restoration, restoration by his spirit. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Because the program of God is based on covenants. Now, watch this. This is where the concept of spiritual tribes come. Tribes are spiritual allocations. Watch this. It's not just a group of people following men. No. God, the way God operates is that he distributes his dimensions by covenant. 
So when he wants a dimension of his spirit to find expression in a generation, he will find a man. Then enter a covenant with that man. Not Old and New Testament. The covenant becomes the authorized allowance. That will be the ordination for the activity of the spirit with respect to that dimension. Are we together now? This is where the concept of tribes coming. That means in God's global assignment, there is an allocation for people groups, spiritual people groups. Because there are graces that represent the covenant of every tribe. And there are times that God is doing something in the earth and he will need a covenant people who are carrying that grace. This is where prophetic words come. It looks like men of God all over the world are speaking nonsense, but it's not so. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit synergizing the dealings of God. So when God speaks, it is important that we believe. Hallelujah. The Lord declared to us by his spirit that 2020 is our year of dominion. And truly speaking, believe me, it is not a cliche. It is not just a want for a theme. It is what God is doing in this season. Through us as a family of faith. Write this down, please. Very quickly and then we'll pray. Our time is gone. Dominion means sovereign control. Sovereign control. Someone is going to begin to prophesy. The word of the Lord is upon a people. Please don't mind me do the things that I'm doing. The word of the Lord. It's not, it's not, it's not something that is, you see, prophecy is not these things that people do. It comes from the boil of the spirit. The speakings of God through vessels for the edification of the saints. Now watch this please. Dominion means sovereign control. It means influence. Dominion means government. A system of legislating the will of a man. Enforcing the will of a king is dominion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So believers are corporately called into the life of dominion. It is true that in Christ, all believers are corporately called into the life of dominion. However, however, there are seasons where the Spirit of God seeks to enforce the purposes of Christ upon the earth and within a territory. And dominion, I wrote something down here. The dominion of the saints in the earth is the only way the name and the purposes of God will be enthroned in the hearts of men. It is through the instrument of dominion that will enforce Christ across territories. This is very important. So when God says it's a year of dominion, he means it's a year of influence. He means it's a year of control. A dimension of spiritual power like never seen before. A dimension of the operation of the spirit. The investment of heaven upon men like gods upon the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Over principalities and powers. The cry for dominion is a cry to see the fullness of God find expression within a territory. This is very important. Please write this very quickly. There are four keys that the Lord gave me that will control the operation of the dominion of the saints, even in this season. Number one, and I've been teaching this a bit as I travel around, is the restoration of the ordinances of priesthood. Priesthood is a dimension that believers do not understand. It's more than prayer. The priesthood dimension of the saints is a, a lot many people pray but few people understand priesthood and we have insulted our forefathers we have insulted the altars in our regions and instead of us to be able to learn spiritual lessons 
the operation of darkness has prevailed for many centuries in territories through the mystery of priesthood to the point that even when the custodian of the altars went their presence or their absence did not affect the continuity of those programs it may have been invoked by diabolic powers but it's still a principle the ordinance of priesthood that believers can come to a point where we sustain an intelligence to stand upon our watch like Habakkuk and make things happen upon the earth at a corporate scale not just healing of one head not just prophesying to one person no invoking things from a point and having the effect within a territory that's priesthood a priest does not go around the city but he controls the city a priest will stay in a shrine and manipulate the elements of the supernatural to communicate a language everyone must hear elijah was not in a radio station elijah stayed in a position and commanded that there be no rain it was not prophecy that was pursued so the first key that will establish the dominion of the saints is priesthood it just so happens that the foundation of priesthood for the believer is prayer but that is not the only dimension of priesthood hallelujah jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer not i will respond i will answer i will answer by showing you great and marvelous things which thou knowest not number two let's hurry up very quickly the second key to the dominion of the saints is light the mystery of light that means this year will be a feast of light dimensions of spiritual illumination listen we must trust god in this day to step into a dimension of a, of uncanny spiritual exactitude that means that we understand the operations that are responsible for the results that are desired job 29 the first 11 verse the first 11 verses please let's hurry up job 29 moreover look up please job continued his parable and said to oh that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me three this is the mystery when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness we're reading to 11 as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle five when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil when i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the streets the young men look at the effect of access feasting upon these truths the young men saw me and hid themselves the aged arose and stood up nine the princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth 11 when the ear heard me then it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me dominion the dominion power of light john chapter 1 and verse 5 the bible says the light shineth in darkness the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there are truths that are responsible for every result in the kingdom please look up i believe that we are going to step into truths that the bible calls the hidden truths that were kept and now are revealed by his holy apostles and prophets are truths that have been kept not because the ancient could not access it it was not their season when he gave john the vision he says seal it is for an appointed time in other words there is a generation where this will be unveiled to the light of god number three the third key to our dominion is the power of results productivity results i believe in results it is the end of all arguments 
Result is powerful. It compels. Result compel. It is true. We must trust God for a grace to step into dimensions of results that defy argument. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 31. We'll read the first five verses. The building of the tabernacle. The Lord spake unto Moses saying to see I have called by name Bezalel the son of Uri the son of Hor of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Look at this. Verse 4. To devise cunning works. To work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones. To set them and in carvings of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. There is a grace that makes for productivity. There is a grace that controls result. Look at the kind of hard elements this man worked on. Gold, brass, timber. There was nothing cheap and nothing mediocre. Yet he had the ability to coordinate them to produce something valuable. There is a grace that must come upon the saints in this season. To be productive always in dimensions that defy argument. Productivity. Number four. And this is very, very important. Very, very important. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, you keep that scripture there. Truly, you can be full of power falsely. It says, truly, I am full of power, but that power came by the Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in this season must be a guarded treasure in the life of believers. Please listen to me. Not just the pursuit of power, not just the pursuit of miracles, signs and wonders. We must restore the fellowship of the Spirit. This is where this ministry is founded upon the grace of our Lord and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the koinonia, the fellowship of the Spirit. I am full of power, not just by prayer, but by fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The evidence of his presence in your life, known to all and sundry, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. The power of the Holy Ghost is important. There is no dominion without power and authority. Not assumed power, not purported power, power that is valid and is provable here and now. Hallelujah. It is the manifestation of the power of God commanding strange results in the lives of the saints that will compel the heathen and anyone around to know that there is a God, that God in the midst of his people is not present, is mighty. The Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. The might of God is a dimension that by God's grace we will experience this year in unprecedented portions. To the point that they looked at Paul and Barabbas and they, 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 they called them Zeus and Hermes, Greek gods. What manner of grace, what manner of spiritual investment. Many people pray, but they do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, many people hear God, but they don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are three things I know about relating with the Holy Spirit. Number one. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit is atmosphere dependent. Your first sacrifice is not to call him. Your first sacrifice is the labor to culture the atmosphere that makes his presence conducive. But the hardest dimension of working with the Holy Spirit, the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere, simulating heaven in your environment to allow the Holy Spirit comfortable. He says, now arise, O God. Solomon was speaking. He says, come to your resting place. Not come to a house I have built. I 
I have simulated heaven within a physical structure. Find comfort in it. You can turn your house into a habitation conducive for the Holy Spirit. You can turn your prayer altar, you can turn your bathroom, you can turn anywhere to a place of real fellowship. The presence of God is atmosphere dependent. Number two, you want to walk with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit only relates with people from a standpoint of brokenness and contriteness. You will never truly walk with the Holy Spirit until you are willing to be broken ever broken not once broken ever broken death walks in you daily that life will come out of it to walk in others brokenness so the atmosphere number two brokenness brokenness nothing i know that attracts the spirit of god to the life of a man like brokenness and contriteness number three the third key to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit is obedience to his voice and his instructions. The Holy Spirit is an extension of the will of the Father through the Christ and ignoring and trivializing his instructions will close up the continuity of that lecture, that dealing process. This is the year that God will speak to you and say oh go on a fast three days drop a sacrifice do this the grace to hear his voice and to be prompt in obeying it intimacy with the holy spirit so dominion is not just an impartation you will need to open up yourself to the ordinances of priesthood you will need to labor in the spirit to access light light enough to shine out any darkness Number three, you must trust God to be productive. Productive. Command results all wise. And then number four, the ministry of the Holy Spirit that brings power. Truly, let me tell you, God desires like never before to empower the saints. Never before. The things that we are seeing are only bits and pieces. They are only tests. There are higher dimensions of real graces that are coming. These graces are not for churches. These graces are not for cities. These graces are transgenerational. But God is beckoning on men and women who will stay to know him enough. That his presence will be more than gold. His presence will be more than reputation. His presence will be more than career. It takes time to know God. There is no knowing God in a nutshell. It does not happen. You will have to labor and stay. One course in the school of the spirit can take two months. The next course can take six months. You must stay till he's done. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. And for us as a family of faith, as a global family of faith, it's important for us to heed to these instructions. Because these are instructions that are scriptural and are a reflection of the voice of God. That means that you return and begin to fan your prayer altar to flames. Lord, grant me the grace to pray. I conquer spiritual laziness. No excuses. I pray in season and out of season. Not just give me prayer. Oh God, do this. No, no, no. The kind of prayer that transforms. The kind of prayer that molds you into a newer and superior your version of yourself if your prayer is petition driven you are not doing much in the spirit and then light light will require the labor of study the spirit of revelation works when there is an atmosphere of meditation and contemplation proverbs 18 1 true desire a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. The spirit of wisdom does not come to busy people. You must be able to isolate yourself. Lord, open my eyes. Show me what the ancient saw. Shakaparo skata. And you are searching. And you are searching. You are sleepy, but you are searching. And then light comes from heaven. A chapter is open. And you will see something you have always looked at, but never seen. 
you will stand and run in the strength of that light and you will watch darkness move productivity will require learning learning you must be willing to upgrade your mind. You must be willing to upgrade your intelligence, upgrade your understanding. This is the year to not be embarrassed about your ignorance. When you find an area of ignorance, do not be embarrassed. Stay and insist till it leaves. Hallelujah. I'm going to give us a few books. I had a revelation and I saw four books. And the Lord said, read it and ask the people to read it. I asked Jordan to get it. You can get it from him. Four books that contain very prophetic roadmaps into the season that we are entering as a church for the next 10 years. Number one, the final quest, Rick Joyner. Please write it down. Number two, the call, Rick Joyner. Write it down. Number three, Rediscovering the Kingdom, Dr. Miles Munro. Please write it down. And then number four, Divine Revelation of the Spirit Realm, Mary Catherine Baxter. These four books, I saw them in the spirit. Number one, The Final Quest. Please, I also speak to our global family, do well to get it. Number one, The Final Quest, Rick Joyner. J-O-Y-N-E-R, Rick Joyner. Two, the call the same person very prophetic classic is a road map to guide the church into the seasons that we're entering number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles monroe late rediscovering the kingdom one of the most concise books i know that introduces the kingdom in an intelligent way and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm the spirit realm there's divine revelation of heaven, Mary Baxter. There's divine revelation of hell. But there's divine revelation of angels. But divine revelation of the spirit. A rare book. Not many people have it, but I, I'm sure that we should be able to get it. Please write these four books. And by the grace of God, we will walk along these materials um, very intricately as the days. Praise the Lord. Now, please, I like. These are instructions that are unique to our global family. And it's important for us to listen. Every year, we bring forth instructions that help us and to give us a direction of where we are going as a ministry. Um, let me start by truly appreciating the entire koinonia family you will never imagine how far god has taken this ministry and taken what we represent across the earth it is no exaggeration when i say we're a global family god has done great things he's given us a global reach he's given us global honor and we truly truly thank him for that and I appreciate yes go ahead please go ahead I appreciate all across nations regions that have contributed uh, in making this happen taking our teachings you know um, yesterday I was in a meeting and someone just reached out to me with a seed from Saudi Arabia and said someone sent me to give you this I say thank you for changing my life and changing the believers there. I said, can you imagine that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. That means that he supplies the intelligence and the wisdom per season. The way that the Lord works with me is that he does not always speak but his word comes um there are people that god works with them in different ways god's word always comes in seasons and when the word comes it shifts us to dimensions in life and in ministry praise the lord now um at at 
at a at a workforce level during our retreat by God's grace we'll have the opportunity to just deal with some of these things but this year by the grace of God God is granting us the grace still part of the dominion mandate and he's expanding our reach across the globe by the spirit of the living God praise the Lord um, the Lord is expanding us we're looking at um, building teams across six regions and and i'm happy i'm happy that that our global family is listening by the grace of god these are instructions that have come from god um of course we'll continue what we're doing here but by god's grace we're building teams so that we can host major meetings in us in uk and canada it's going to be once every year beginning from this year praise the lord and we're also going to strengthen our African reach by the grace of God. A minimum of three nations is granting us the grace. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're kickstarting with South Africa and Ghana. So those in South Africa and Ghana, God is speaking to us. Praise the Lord. Um, now, let me talk a bit about the school of ministry. Please, we're still suspending it for now, and, and it's a very serious reason why we're doing that. Um, you cannot believe the demand. In a particular nation, there are 50 people, 50, a group of 50 people willing to come into the country for the school of ministry. Uh, and the demand that is in various places to establish centers across, but um, we're walking by the Spirit. Amen. It's easy to think it's expansion, but when you go on your own, you fail. And, and let, let me say this, we are not ashamed to grow. We are not ashamed to metamorphose gradually. Sometimes you have to be careful as you grow because people can put pressure on you. And um, if I follow the pressure that people are putting on me, I think we'll establish a branch, a school of ministry everywhere in every state. And then you find out that God will only be in the ones that are consistent with his program. Praise the Lord. And so, um, we're still hanging on. We have, to, we have to be very fair on the people. And then we're consulting and coming up with the wisdom strategy on what to do. Now, the third instruction, please listen, this is very, very important. The third instruction is, uh, this is concerning our international guests. We have an average of at least five to 20 international guests that come in every week. Um, and it's been a concern that we're not able to see them, we're not able to talk, um, do the things we're doing. So by God's grace, um, and then also for security reasons, by the grace of God, um, we continue to develop our security outfit, but as we're growing, um, the DSS and the military will continue to demand that we upgrade our security infrastructure to be able to host the kinds of people that we're having and receiving. Um, so because of that and all of that, by God's grace, uh, we're going to start holding a special time with all our international guests in Abuja. It's going to be once every month. It will not be in Zaria, it will be in Abuja. Hallelujah. Yes. So it's going to be a special time where I will be meet with the guest myself who we'll have the time to talk, teaching sessions, and then I can counsel and pray, and then they can take their flights and go to save the rigor. Uh, you can always come if you want the Koinonia experience. We're always open, but for the specialized sessions, and it will be based on registration. It's free, free, not paying anything, but to be able to coordinate the people in teams. Already we have... As several people were building teams across these regions so that we'll be able to host them. I think you should be happy for this. Praise the Lord. So all our guests, I know that we have some of them here today. Um, I, I came in from Lagos this morning and I was surprised to meet someone who was on his way to Zaria. I'm sure he's somewhere here. He came in from Ghana. I don't know if he's a pastor or he's a leader, someone also from Ghana. Okay, I think he's outside. Praise God. And so to that effect, we will, every week we'll continue to announce, this is just to open us up. There are a few that will come at a leadership level. 
But God is really helping us to build structures. He's moving us. And we thank God for what he's doing. It's truly a year of dominion. And we'll see the power and the glory of God uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, for your life, you must insist. Please write out right now, just prophetically, the various areas of your life where you seek to see the power of God manifest this year. We're going to pray. I wanted us to finish on time so that we can... Um, I actually came in from a conference through a meeting and I'm here. Tomorrow I'm back, so we're just trying to gain time very quickly. Please write it down prophetically. This and that and that is the area of my life that I seek to see the power of God manifest. My finances, my marriage, my spiritual life. Please write it down. Write it believing. You're not just obeying a man, you are obeying God. I want to see ministry step into another dimension this year. I want to see the hand of God upon my life in mighty ways. I want to see restoration in my life this year. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Shalabarusi atakata. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. written it we're going to pray shortly on it but just one more project nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20 by god's grace we're going to start building our facility with immediate effect and um, yes we build our zaria facility god has shown us grace he's shown us mercy and then answered i them and said unto them the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we will arise and build. Praise the Lord. And so please pray every day. Pray, speak over the structure. Lord, we declare you are giving us a place that will be a habitation of your glory. And... Um, Truly, God has been faithful. He's granted us great opportunities. More of this will come. I'm talking to our global family, so I may not go into all of the details. But just for you to know what God is already doing. is a year of dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to pray? Lay your hands on what you just wrote while you are seated. And I'd like you to give it life. Give it life through the power of prophecy. Give it life in the name of Jesus. Please believe this is a year to believe. Childlike faith, childlike conviction. Shila parus kalabarunda jele pratizikata. Embratos kabaruja de gede balada balada kotos. Pranda salabaratusiata. Shebaratusekete baladaba. Lay your hands and speak upon it. In the name of Jesus, I give you life. In this year of dominion, arise, arise. You will not remain as letters. I speak life to you. In the name of Jesus, outside make sure you are praying. Inside make sure you are praying. Hebarato shalapas kedabada. Embreketeli barato jata. Rakata parude sheli parato jada balaba. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. You are 
I will walk a walk in your days. I will walk a wonder in your days. See, listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. This is the season to be believers, to believe God. Lord, I believe you are a wonder walking God and you are coming up to me with speed. You are shifting me to another dimension. Lift your voice and declare, Lord, I believe. My faith is alive. I believe you. I believe you. I plunge into prophecy. I plunge into prophecy. I plunge into prophecy. Is someone pray? Supernatural manifestations of your word in my life. Wonder walking dimensions of your grace. Wonder walking dimensions of your hand. I receive a fresh baptism of the grace for prayer, the spirit of priesthood, the ability to stand upon my watch. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray inside, pray outside, pray online. In the name of Jesus. You are praying. The grace to pray. The grace to be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lay your hands on your eyes and say eyes open. Open to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open to the revelations of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. That God is able to wash my eyes with eyes out that I may see, that I may see, that I may see. Someone is praying, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, that I may behold one trust things from out of thy law. Open my eyes to the mysteries of dominion. Open my eyes to the mysteries of speed. Open my eyes. Show me the secrets of the kingdom. Show me the wonder-working power of your word. Are you praying? Open my eyes, oh God. Light, 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 illumination, illumination.
number three, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head. Command your mind to open. Open up to creativity. Open up to excellence at a global scale. At a global scale. At a global scale. Open up to a higher dimension of dominion. Results by the Spirit of God. Lift your voice and pray. Shela baratos komparata, makapla to shoto baliata. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty make a man of understanding. Speak to your mind. Command it to open up. Command it to open up. Open up to creativity. You're going to cry for a deeper dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please listen. The Holy Spirit is not an option to the believer. The Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals. The Holy Spirit is God's advantage to us. I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When ye, not it, he, the Spirit of truth is come. Listen. He is the only one who truly brings beauty and glory out of our lives. Outside of him, we are not worth much. But when the Holy Spirit invests himself upon your life, he will turn you into a wonder. Did the Bible not say, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high? Isaiah 32 and verse 15. Then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And then a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. I'd like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, may my life and my environment be conducive for fellowship with you in this season. Intentional fellowship. I call for my environment intentionally. Someone is praying. Don't invite him just for ministry. Don't invite him just for success. Invite him for life. I need you as a matter of life and death. Shalabarada bagato shabrande gani manaragos. Shalabarada la brande gade barakato shalikata. about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can wake you up in the night while you are sleeping. My son, wake up. I want to show you the mysteries of your destiny. And if you allow slumber, sleep is a blessing, but slumber is a cause. God does not give slumber. He giveth his beloved sleep. Are we together? Walking with the Holy Spirit requires sensitivity. There are times you are on the road and you can just say, don't enter that car. Stand. Not because the car will have an accident. I want to show you something. Walking with the Holy Ghost requires childlike flexibility. When you become too organized, you will never know him. You will need a measure of, of um, that childlike attitude. The Holy Spirit can ask you to sit down quietly in the place of prayer and just play worship. And for the next 30 minutes, you are like a madman. Do you have the flexibility to allow his ministry manifest? 
Hallelujah. Many times we do not experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we are too conscious of ourselves. Our reputation, I am this, I am that. And sometimes we want him to fit into the mold of our religion. And because of his love, he will make do with the allowance given him. But there can be more. This is a year where it doesn't mean that you just do stupid things in the name of the Holy Spirit. No. But that you will require flexibility. Flexibility. You can be walking and the Holy Spirit will tell you, go to that market woman selling corn and tell her, Mama, pray for me. It doesn't make sense. It may look stupid. You may look too dignified. But if you can submit to the foolishness of spiritual things, that can be the impartation that shifts you to another dimension. Hallelujah. The wind bloweth where it listeth. John 3 and verse 8. You cannot tell where it's going or where it comes. So is one who is led of the spirit. The character of the spirit is like the wind. Sometimes it looks haphazard, but it's achieving what it's achieving. And you will need to sustain that flexibility. We are going to pray for the grace for influence. What is influence? The ability to compel people to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence. It's one of God's major kingdom advanced strategy. It takes evangelism and influence for the manifestation, the continuity of God's kingdom advanced program to happen. Hallelujah. There is a grace for influence that can come upon people corporately and they will say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. They will tell themselves, let us go. That grace, when it comes upon you, comes upon your business, comes upon the works of your hands, it will transform you. You will become a model. You will become a wonder even to yourself. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lord, turn me into an influence for the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory. Not to build an empire for myself. But so that as men look at me, I can point them to Jesus. As they look at your life, you can point them to Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. give us a few prayer points let's pray a few more and then we're done tonight I want us to corporately cry for this grace for favor please listen please listen please find a way of believing that your life will never make substantial progress until the favor of God is upon your head. The wonder of God's favor upon a man, upon an organization, upon a business is a mystery that very few people have understood. Believe me. The fortitude to become the delight of people where no amount of investment channeled towards you is perceived as a waste because you have become Dula, you have become Hepzibah. We're going to pray. Listen, you can tell within a moment that this life is operating just based on hard work and strive and hustling 
but you can tell when the favor of God picks you the difference is climbing a ladder and entering a lift the energy of the lift is what picks you I know what the favor of God can do I know what the hand of God the favor of God please the next one or two minutes find a way of praying from your heart look upon us with favor this year look upon my family with your favor this is the year of the favor of the lord this is the year the favor of the lord this is the year please pray shapakatos kabarata legabarun satash kabarato segetesh favor upon my head favor upon my destiny favor upon my life my organization my ministry favor prophet favor prophet in endless favor with God and favor with men and 35 let me show you what favor can do job 38 canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee next verse can thou send lightning like a messenger that they may go and say to thee here we are you can call lightning to come and it comes you can speak to the cloud and abundance will meet you where you are there are dimensions of favor you must pray the grace to command resources the bible says strong men retain wealth the grace to command the loyalty of nations not men not cities territories lift your voice and pray release upon me oh god that grace release upon me oh god that grace the grace that speaks to the clouds to release abundance. The grace that sends the lightnings. And they say, here we are. At the back of God.
Let's take one last prayer. Now listen. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have built houses, let it not be that when you are increased in cattle, let it not be that when you have all these things, you will say, my power. Yeshua HaMashiach there is something in scripture called the deceitfulness of riches that means wealth can be like a preacher it can preach a sermon to you and redirect your passion redirect your loyalty you are going to pray and say lord in advance i surrender my achievements in advance i surrender the exploits in advance i surrender the name the fame the increase it is for your glory and it remains for your glory as you glorify the sun the sun will bring you glory lift your voice and vow that vow before God. <laughs> Lift your voice and pray as you increase in ministry. I vow that you will be glorified as you increase me in business. I vow that the nations will know you are the doer as you multiply your grace, your wisdom, your power. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The applauds of men can be deceptive. They clap for you because you are the one they see. But you must be wise enough and bold enough to let them know that there is one who is mightier than I. There is one who is the basis, the backbone of my life. He is not just your support system. He is the basis for everything that comes. Listen, God in this season is ready to stretch his arms unrestrained to those who are not ashamed to tell the nations, if it means to stop clapping for me so you can have the time to clap for him, let it be. By the time you are obsessed with the applauds of men, by the time you are obsessed with a good name, by the time you are obsessed with the mundanity of achievements in a way and manner that it becomes difficult to let Christ be seen directly. Don't say God knows. Men must know that he is the doer. That's where he is glorified. When men do not know he is the doer, you have robbed the testimony that brings God glory. You must be intentional. Create all kinds of strategies to force men to see God when they see you. They will not see him through you ordinarily. You have to find a way of manipulating your image to reflect Christ. Listen. I told you, you've heard me say it many times, that many years ago God spoke to me and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. He didn't lie. This year from January till December, you must perpetually cry every day. And say, Lord, my desire is to be a mirror. That when they look at me, they must think about you. If they look at me and think about me, something is wrong. They should look at me and strangely and mysteriously begin to think about you. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. Apostle, look at this wonderful thing through your life. And then you tell them, I appreciate it. But let the glory go to him. And you are not careful. Listen. If giving God the glory does not embarrass you. Get ready for surprises. God will do things in your life. That will cause you to stand in awe. Because of our various backgrounds. And because of many times our upbringing and our experiences. There is usually an obsession. To want to be the faces around achievements i want to i want everybody to know this came from me 
and, and there is a healthy dimension to that but we must be very careful the people that God wants to use in these days are people who are not afraid to hide their face so that you will be seen can you sacrifice to veil yourself so that you will have no face and the only face that comes upon your veil is the face of his majesty that when men see you by what power and might do you rot this by what grace do you move in this dimension and then you hide your face oh i need to know the face behind it no it's not as important as the god behind the face the god behind the face should be the end product not the face hallelujah listen it looks like it's just a simple charge but it's a very serious issue to god if there's one thing i know about god is his obsession to see that anything that comes from him to you returns glory to him and it is difficult because we can forget hallelujah yes wow you did this wow you organized this meeting wow look this unprecedented dimension of exploits and sometimes you just enjoy the moment and you feel you'll be cheated if you invite god into that moment and you can almost say god wait let me savor the moment when i'm done whatever is left i can call you and he stands because he gave you a will when your life becomes a reflection of his majesty when everything about you becomes an inspiration for people not just to follow you but to follow him they only follow you because you too you are on your way to meeting him please this year make up your mind money will not possess my mind power will not possess my mind achievements will not possess my mind i remain contrite and broken and humble while they celebrate it enjoy it but don't keep quiet that is the time to say ladies and gentlemen i have something to tell you you have celebrated me but i am absolutely nothing without you the god who represents my possibilities and then god is glorified and he's motivated to continue to open greater doors many people have short-circuited the continuity of the lifting of god in their lives because they got to a point where it now became shameful to tell the nations without him i am small i am nothing john got it right that i may decrease so that he will increase it's not self-condemnation my brothers and my sisters it does not rob the fact that you are one with him when the great go on their knees god rises on his throne and he can stand and say who is this defying your achievements defying your accolades defying the applause to let men see me and he will swear a vow with his integrity that as far as you are concerned you will continue to rise for as long as the sun remains in the sky there are covenants that God makes with men. Listen very carefully. Please listen to my last message last year. There are covenants that God makes with men that are not old covenant, new covenant. They are personal covenants that brand his relationship with them by reason of the way they have chosen to walk with him. There are people God has vowed a vow that even if the nations, even if the earth stops producing, they will never beg. It's a covenant. It's not an impartation. It's a covenant. There are people God has vowed a vow with his jealousy that for as long as the earth remains, they will continue to prosper and increase. There are people God has vowed a vow that they will live longer and they will fulfill their days. Listen. It's time to come out of the general relationship with God this year. Move so far with God that he has to look for a name to define your relationship. It no longer just becomes everyone come to God. He says, no, I isolate you. Your sacrifice is worthy of note. Your commitment is worthy of note. Your death, your brokenness, your contriteness, your insistence to see me glorify. The pursuit of friendship with me 
necessitates that I define my relationship with you. And suddenly he will call you a name that only you can be called. And that becomes the name, the title of his jealousy upon your life. And he will protect it with his might. Please, the song of surrender must be in your ears. Don't, don't mind all this nonsense you hear people say around and say, oh, no, 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 no. A surrendered life is not a weak life. I've taught you that weakness is one of the most powerful weapons in the realm of the spirit. Weakness is greater than strength. So when you are weak, you are strong. Lord, who am I to do this great thing? If you do not help me, can I ever deceive myself that I can be helped? And you are attracting his strength. Lord, this project that is before me now, do I have the wisdom in my power? I lean not on my own understanding and he's coming. Lord, my academics this year, if you don't arise, will it not look like last year? I surrender everything to you. Hallelujah. Please, let's hold hands all over. We're rounding up. This is going to be a very spectacular year. It truly is going to be a year where in spite of the onslaught of darkness, territorially speaking, and over the regions of the north and so, and so forth, God himself will grant the saints grace to prevail. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I don't just come out and speak nonsense. But we are going to pray. I saw an onslaught of darkness across the north. A massive multiplication of kidnapping. Strategic kidnapping. Where they just pick people like chickens. And this one is not just asking for ransom again. It's just destroying people to be able to inflict fear, to discourage the saints, and so on and so forth. And if we do not pray, especially because of the regions that we're in, are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Do not say like Esther when Mordecai was beckoning on her to speak to the king concerning the threat of her man. She was comfortable for the moment in the palace and Mordecai sent a message and said, look, young lady, they may destroy us who are outside the gate, but be sure they will come for you too. So don't wait on the day they kidnap your son or your daughter or your wife or your husband or your pastor or a leader. We can stand as a global family of faith and lift up our voice and say, Lord, first we declare a shield and a covering over everyone connected to this family and then we extend it to the body of Christ and especially the body of Christ across this region. We silence wars and rumors of wars. We silence it within our borders. This is not to scare you. But there's no point lying to you. I saw this. I have prayed it and I've been praying it on my own. But it's important that the saints pray. Praise the Lord. It's important. I saw a list of specific people that were being hunted for to be picked. And we must pray. Our city is our business. I told you when you are born again, you are saved. But when your territory is secured, you are safe. Praise the Lord. We have to pray. Especially because we have people flocking in every week. This is part of the reasons why we are also making adjustments on our programs with visitors. Because the horse is prepared for battle, even though safety is of the Lord. There is a mandate upon us to communicate responsibility, especially in this season. But we are going to pray nothing missing nothing broken the covenant of peace lift your voice and pray and the god of peace shall give you peace always
by all means and the lord of peace shall give you peace always by all means and the lord of peace shall give us peace always by all means we fortify our spiritual borders in the name of jesus we speak over zaria the state we speak over joss we speak over kano we speak over maturi we speak over yola in the name of jesus we speak over the northeast we speak over the north central we speak over the entire nation in the name of jesus we command peace we declare peace we establish peace we are blessed in our going out blessed in our coming in in the name of jesus the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please pray it's a sacrifice this is priesthood it's a spiritual responsibility thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday please hold your hands together but thou o lord art a shield for me my glory in the lifter of my head. points while we are holding our hands we are going to pray over every expansion of the ministry this year and all the projects to the region of the earth here in Nigeria across Africa, UK US, Canada lift your voice, Lord we are taking the fire, we are taking the dimension of the spirit committed to us by the spirit by the spirit Pray for all our teams in these regions. Are you praying? Lift your voice and pray by the Spirit. The Lord gave the word. Great is the company of them that published it. Thank you for access to these regions. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit. Thank you for signs and wonders. The establishment of the Lordship of the Christ. Thank you for the dimension of your grace committed to us that we are taking to the nations. As can now give the nations to you, O God. That's the cry of my heart. And shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on earth. I stand now, give the nations to you. together I'm praying I'll pray for everyone father in the name of Jesus we thank you for the privilege to represent your purposes you have exalted my life you have exalted this ministry 
You have made us a praise and a wonder to the nations. And Father, standing and holding hands from Zaria to the ends of the earth, I bring before you a global family. Everyone following online and the millions around the world connected to this grace and to this vision from Asia to Europe to US to the Caribbeans. The angel of your presence has continued to herald that which you are doing in and through our lives. And we thank you. And so far, like Paul the Apostle, I bow my knees to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I cry and I pray. Dear Lord God Almighty, you have declared that this is our year of dominion. I dedicate this year, I stand as one you have trusted with leadership over this ministry. And I pray, walk wonders in our midst. Walk wonders in our midst. Father, thank you for all that you have done in and through my life and this ministry. But Lord, let us experience your glory at another scale. Amen. Your glory in another dimension. Amen. We thank you for the opening of the two lift gates to these regions of the earth. We thank you for the ministry of the spirit, the communication of the life, the power, the majesty of the Christ. We declare with our blood and we declare with our life that the nations must know you. We declare that the nations must see Jesus for who he is. Father, we thank you for this year. Thank you for our building project. You will grant us speed. Thank you for the effectual working of your grace. Thank you for all of the structures you have given and put across this nation. Lord, we thank you for our international guests, our visitors from across the world that you continue to bring. Lord, may this be a season of encounter for them. Mm. Thank you, O oh God, for all of our expansion projects across this nation and across Africa and the ends of the earth. We declare that our desire is to see you lifted. May the angel of your presence go with us. May the grace that backs the covenant go with us. May the throne that commissioned and anointed this vision go with us. Father, I pray for every leader, every worker, that this year we will experience your grace in unprecedented dimensions. No death. No limitations. We are a family of love and power and grace and impact in the name of Jesus. May the angels that signify the words you have given to us excel in strength. Excel in light. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I pray for you, everyone here. And as many who are following online. In the name of Jesus. And by the God of the heavens. I pray that this year. May you experience God in a new way. Amen. My first prayer sincerely. Is for a refiring of your relationship with God. Amen. Step into a deep dimension of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray for your appetite for the word. Amen. You will desire the word even more than your necessary food. Amen. I pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amen. That it will rest upon us corporately. Amen. The grace for favor and that for influence. Let it rest upon us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In advance, I thwart every operation of darkness. Amen. Schemed against our lives. Amen. We are escaped like the fowler before the snare. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for every family represented here. This year is your year of testimonies. I pray for every man of God and every church, every ministry across the globe connected to this grace and this vision. In the name of Jesus, new dimensions. Fresh fire. Genuine kingdom impact. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare, take away the sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus. And all through, let it be the sound of rejoicing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I agree with you that everything you desire that you wrote down, I release my faith with you. Amen. Even from tonight, speedy answers. Amen. Father, everyone connected to this grace and this vision, may humility and love be the signature of their lives. Amen. May passion for God be your rear guard. Amen. May an unprecedented dimension of the anointing be like a helmet upon your head. Amen. May speed be like the shoes on your feet. Amen. Be graced with fresh oil. Amen. And I prophesy upon you the covenant of peace. Amen. I declare upon you that the God of peace will give you peace Amen. always Amen. and by all means Amen. in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Lord I receive every word that you have spoken over my life and I receive the manifestation please lift your voice and pray I not only receive the word I receive the manifestation Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. Unto her there shall be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good evening. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord for giving us this opportunity again. Oh, by the way, um, I was told last week was powerful in here. I was told fire was burning all over this place. Let's honor the men of God, Ejimi, Pastor Alpha, Benga, and all the people who made that possible. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just a few, just a few things to note, and then we'll go to the word. Just a few things to note. Um, please pay attention, especially as regards the forthcoming prayer and fasting um, <laughs> praise the Lord uh, we are not religious people and we are not people who just do things out of the ritual of it I truly believe with all my heart that these seven days will truly be extraordinary moments in our lives praise the Lord so prepare your heart for it. Um, we decided to add a few things to the seven days prayer and fasting. And um, we'll be having other specialized sessions, like four or five of them. We decided to have um, a special session for our children. I think it's, it's time we begin to bring them into. So we're going to have a session for our children. We're going to have a session um, for worshipers and music minister there will be a specialized session there will be a special healing session also would we'll dedicate a day 
to really, really take our time and pray for the sick. And then we're going to have a business session too. Yes. We'll have one day. All of this will be morning sessions. Um, it's our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And so we want to really trust God to equip ourselves. Um, basically, these are the sessions. If I omitted any, I'm sure that they'll communicate it. But just for you to prepare your heart, all the, all the specialized sessions will be in the morning so that we'll have some time to really, really um, deal with the matters um, that we need to deal with in the night. It's seven days, but our fast starts from Sunday. This is just to honor the wedding that will be happening on um, Saturday. Two of our dear people will be wedding on Saturday. And uh, because many of us are involved in, in what they are doing, the meeting will start on Saturday, but the fasting proper will start on Sunday. I hope you, I hope you understand. Praise the Lord. So that it will not be honorable to all come and then we are unable to, to eat and celebrate with our dear people. Praise the Lord. Um, the second announcement, we have so many guests coming. Please, um, especially for those listening online, we, we believe in honor. And please, if there are any, maybe men of God or any public personalities you think are worthy of honor. Now, let me put a disclaimer very quickly so that you don't embarrass yourself um, those who are deserving of honor if your honor starts from your coming to koinonia you are not yet there are we together now that means when we say those who are deserving of honor there are people by god's grace whether in the music ministry in mainstream ministry in business or so on and so forth who um we just feel that is good we are aware you can communicate through um our PR department, our helpline, so that we are where you are coming. And then um, because of the crowds, we are still working on ways to be able to manage the size of the people that will be coming um, so that we don't leave um, a senior man of God maybe just standing lost somewhere in the crowd just to give honor. Um, but then it is still all right if you feel you just want to sneak in and sit down. Sometimes these rituals can interrupt your receiving. There are people who receive better when they are lost in the crowd. Sometimes this unnecessary honor can distract you and then you don't really receive anything. But please let us know. And if you are aware of any one of such people coming, you can meet the protocol department or our public relations department and let us know. Praise the Lord. And then for... Um, Mukhtar's wedding, sorry I'm bringing it here we had um, suggested shortly in venues but everything will be happening in Blue Roof just for you to be aware everything, the service, reception everything will be there once, I will just do it once and for all praise the Lord are we ready for tonight? please pray, open my eyes and grant me understanding open my eyes grant me understanding Let me see, let me know, let me understand. Are you praying? Father, open my eyes. I have come to see, I have come to understand. Hallelujah. Growth and, um, and development, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm 
to another never occurs by default. Please take note. This, this is just to establish something before we get to the word. That means that it is not possible. Physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that that the only thing that grows automatically is your age. Every other thing must be engaged to grow. You don't have to do anything to add to your age. Once you are alive and the time comes, the year recycles, you are plus one. Ready or not? But every other thing, your spiritual life, please listen, your relevance, your understanding, your transformation, every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible. That means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself, you cannot say it happened by mistake. Are we together? If Saul becomes Paul and is mightily used by God, it's not just that God chose him. Uh -uh. That growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths. I will continue to drum it in this house. Why? Because you see the principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. Please understand this. The principles that make for growth, for impact, and for success are finite. They are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it. It is our pursuit of God and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We will never exhaust the knowledge of God. But as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance, that make for our usefulness, the principles are finite. This should be good news for someone because it then means that I can allocate time and know these things so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing God. No longer learning principles. A time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with God. Not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that. No. And this is what by the grace of God, God is helping us achieve in this place. If you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard, or they are so infinite. Are we together? The principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned, please listen to me. They are captured in this truth and they are finite. They are finite. That means that you can collect them, that body of information, and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned, God has helped you. It is not when you will or if you will arrive, it's when you will arrive. At that point, your life is reduced to worship and praise. Your learning is God. Your subject is God. Not prosperity. Are we together? Not how to parent children, not how to succeed, not how to engage restoration, not how to speak peace. It's a cost if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things. Because God as a subject is worth your lifetime. All of these auxiliary things about God that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You will never be able to centralize your pursuit on God and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life. Children here, 
different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage it will distract you all these things are the things around god they are not god they are his ways my phone is not me it's around me you can learn how to use my phone it doesn't mean you know me are we together now so we must trust god for grace accelerated grace to be able to capture these things establish their results in our lives and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned it is god only god ever are we together it was a preacher that taught us he says of reading many books there is no end and he says much learning is a weariness to the flesh then he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear God and keep his commands he said this is the whole duty of man let him that glory yet glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not that he bought a car not that he bought a house are we together not that he raised children well all of these things are important but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you must trust god for grace and quick understanding isaiah 11 and verse 2 quick understanding you can understand late it's still not a blessing understanding will bless you if it is quick because everything in life is time tagged you don't have all the time spending all my life learning about money learning about greatness learning about leadership as important as those things are you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek god if our generation does not learn this we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter we will have principles of a b and i teach you principles all the time but the principles are supposed to help you stabilize so that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat what to wear how to be great the principles are finite now you can focus on him he becomes your object he becomes your pursuit he becomes your everything this is the place of power this is the place of true relevance because let me tell you this everything in your life minus the knowledge of god will still leave that vacuum you know many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus god you will still be able to go around because we say those in the world there are people who don't love god and yet they are rich you need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without god god designed man to be frustrated without him it's his design is part of his intelligence he designed it to be impossible to be fully fulfilled if he's not in that factor that equation so when someone tells you i'm doing well without god that person is a liar i'm telling you it's only a matter of time riches can deceive they are important you see how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child your child will enjoy that bicycle even the injury will not matter but two weeks later you see that bicycle in the rain he has exhausted it and it's all right that's how life is without god you can get a certificate and be happy and after five years the same thing you laughed at you now hate it because it seemed not to give you what you thought it would produce then you turn your pursuit to something else finance and then you press through and make all the money and ignore god and then for a while you are happy because you are buying properties and you can now be at the priority level of living and then very soon you will find out that things cannot be god hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now please listen then you can choose to replace things with people like a husband like a wife like children like physical earthly relationships 
and they will bless you for a long time except for the fact that the jealousy of God preserved a dimension only his size can feel. No matter what else in your life you bring, I tell you this, it will take time, but you will know that life without God is not living. You're all I want. You're all I ever need. You're all I want. Help me know you are me. Listen, let me tell you how God trains us. When you start your spiritual journey, it is God. Then when you know a bit about him, he will help you to know his ways. And the end of your life should be like the beginning, back to God. So it is God. But then he gives you the things that pertain to life, him, godliness. But he knows that somewhere along the line, your children need to go to school. You need to eat. So he will delve from him. He's still there. But the focus for many years will be his ways. And many times we, for, we forget that his ways is not the ultimate. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. Say the scriptures testify. A way leads to somewhere. So when all is said and done with the cars and the fame and the accolades and everything. God says I kept my part. Five years of your life, I didn't bother you so much again. Here and there you had encounters, but now that you know my ways, now that you are not thinking about money again, now that you know what it takes to raise your children, can I have my time back? And he said, Lord, I became famous on my way and I found out that my fame is better than this, this, this me and you. I, I started in innocence, but as I continued, I found out that there was fame on the way. And now I'm no longer interested in you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Even learning the ways of God as the ultimate pursuit is still not the perfect strategy. The ways of God are important, but at the back of your heart, please hear me, the end of your spiritual journey must still be the way you started. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. That's what it means to be Alpha Omega. So right now we are in a season where you no longer may be having the dreams you used to have again. Remember those times, it was not about principle or anything. You were not seeing any attack. It was just all of those encounters. And it seems to be suspended for a while to allow you to be relevant within the context of your... It's not backsliding. He's showing you his ways. Sometimes some of you will still go back and say, Lord, I want it before. He says, I know. I'm waiting for you at the other side. So that means if you focus on knowing his ways, it's proof that you really want to meet him first so that you will finish with these matters and it will give you room to say, Lord, I'm done. I didn't know that I can be established fast. By the grace of God, I do not have to cry for what to eat again. I'm not coming to you complaining about an attack. I've conquered that. I've found the keys that give me victory. Lord, I am here with you for fellowship. What do you want, son? You, you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, It is not only being an unbeliever that can keep you away from God. Lack of quick understanding can keep you away from God. You will be close to him, but not with him. You are around him learning everything. Imagine that I come to your house and all I keep doing is going to your kitchen. I can eat your yam. 
is your yam but it's not you i can go and use your restroom i can even drive your car i will leave your house saying i met you it's a lie i didn't meet you i met the things around you those things are called conveniences when you go to see a guest you don't go there to eat but then in seeing that guest sometimes before he arrives they will serve you does it happen to you they will say okay this what would you like sometimes they will even call you to a table if you get carried away by the buffet and you sit there and forget that there is a meeting you spent three hours there it was just supposed to solve your problem so that when you spend that time seeing him hunger will not distract your concentration god knows that it's better to serve him in your house than a rented apartment so in as much as you start there, you say, son, let me show you my ways. Not to compete you with Bill Gates. It's a foolish agenda. It's a purposeless, kingdomless agenda. There is no glory to God competing with Bill Gates. Well, that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to rise to a point where the ways of God are mastered. So that you reduce sky. Look, my brothers and my sisters, listen to what I'm teaching you. The ways of God are powerful. But if you stay there, you will not know God. And at the end of it, you will live your life in a void that will frustrate you. I asked for children. You gave me children. I asked for a job. You gave me a job. Listen, I asked for promotion. You gave me promotion. I asked to be a celebrity. And you took me to the nations. I asked for money, you gave me money. I asked for dollars, you gave me dollars. I asked for revelation, you gave me revelation. Listen, I asked for word of knowledge, you gave me. I asked for miracle power, you gave me. And then after all of that, God steps back. Different from everything you've had. And say, I'm still here. And many times we say, Lord, do I really need you again? Do I need you? Whatever I cannot do, I can outsource. I have the influence. Hmm. And God stands back and says, was this all I meant to you? Yes, it is true that I am the way, but I am not only the way. The way is how you start. It should lead you to life. It's a person. The passion with which many people and the slow rate of spiritual transformation is becoming dangerous. It's one thing to be in ignorance, but it's another thing to transit slowly. Time is running and time is fixed. The next 20 years of your life, if you are still learning what you are learning now, is no longer a blessing. Imagine a man of 45 years in primary school. Say, I can make it. There's, yes, you can make it. There's nobody that says you cannot make it. But you will be sleeping while they are teaching because your body does not expect you to be at that level. While they are teaching the children, spell uh, this and that and that, you will be a nuisance to the people and it will not be your fault. Let me tell you this. The prayer for speed is a real prayer most believers pray for speed because they have a passion to make a statement either to loved ones let people in my family know i am this as good as that is it's not a very valid reason speed that god can establish a man early 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 what is the purpose of delay? Something, an effect on your time, not you, your time. I hope you realize that all Satan is really interested in is your time. Hmm. So he uses you to do something to your time. Are we together? The ways of God are very important, but the ways of God is not God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I am Alpha Omega. 
Why am I sharing this? Because we are in the face of our lives now when we should focus on learning the ways of God first. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many believers who think that every time we teach on the principles of the kingdom, it should be encounters all the way. No, you'll be frustrated. The matters that pertain unto life will hit you and will derail you. No matter who you are, it's not something you can do anything against. You may be wicked to yourself, but when you watch your children ask you questions you cannot answer, it will dry down your life. You see a lot of people will tell you, in 1995, I was the prayer secretary of so so, -so fellowship. And right now, the person is not even born again. He said, God was not there for me. I served God, but now when it had to do with God blessing my own family, he left me. And God said, no, you didn't understand the sequence. It starts with me. Then at a point, I step back to let you learn my ways so that you can obtain the things that need to give you the freedom and the liberty to return back to me. Occasionally, these things can distract you. That's why retreats are powerful. Because they take you back. And that presence and that atmosphere, once again, God says, I'm still here. Woe betides a man who spends his whole life chasing things, things, things. To look for a car for a lifetime is not an achievement. That at the end of your life, if I say, what did you get? I have five estates, 21 degrees, 30 children, 8 wives, chieftaincy titles, traveled around the nation, and God is just waiting for his name, and he's not in the equation of your destiny. That's what many of our loved ones did. They started with God, but when God was calling them to learn his ways, they thought it was the devil. And they casted God away and said, Lord, I will keep learning your ways. And hunger forced them to leave God. To get back to learn his ways. And the spirit of revelation was not there. And so their pace is slow. And right now they've been 40 years trying to learn how to be rich. 40 years trying to learn how to be leaders. 40 years trying to learn how to be great. So when you say, let's, let's spend time worshiping God. Let's spend six hours praying. The person looks at you and says, are you stupid? Six hours praying. What am I telling God? All that I've been telling him, is he not listening to? It doesn't make sense to invest that kind of time when you are hungry. When you are starting out, God will allow it for a reason. You notice how great ministries start. They usually start with these moments of encounter. That's how we started. You understand? God will not tell you anything about money, marriage, children, prosperity, increase, influence, ministry, ethics, greatness. Leave all of that. It's just him. People coming back with dreams, visions of heaven, encounter, and so on and so forth. But where many people miss it is they do not sustain the intelligence to observe the transitions. Listen, prayer groups listen, ministries listen. This is where we miss it. Because many times we think just because God is the object of the pursuit. When he now tells you, start learning my ways. Sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't need it. Because of the excellency of his presence and he understands. That's why how you are mentored matters. There is a pattern of growth. This is what is happening to some of us right now. You got born again since 95 and the only thing in your life now is that you know God. Right now, you are not even sure you know God again. Why? Because you suddenly discovered that while you were serving God, when you started, somebody was giving you a harvest, whether you sowed a seed or not. And now you've been left alone. The reality of being the breadwinner of your family will not even allow you to spend time with God. And Satan likes it so. That's why you hear people say, I used to be on fire before I got married. And this foolish husband or this stupid wife that I've married is the reason why I no longer can love God. No. You used to spend time worshipping God, but now you have to dedicate 10 years of your life giving birth to children. 10 years is not 2 days. 10 years taking care of the children. 
You just sense that presence you used to send when you were in secondary school. And here's your baby crying too with the presence. And God says, attend to the baby. Oh Lord, but that sweet face. Mm -mm. Attend to the baby. If you attend fast, you will have time with me. But if you, if you pay the price and leave that baby, he will force you to leave me tomorrow. Listen to me. It is not error when God switches you to learn his ways. Hear me. Hear me, believers. It is not error when God just, he does not take himself out of your life, but he focuses you on his ways to say, learn this. You need it. You need it for your daily bread. You will encounter things that will bring delay in your life. So my son, buy a book on restoration. Add it to your spiritual archives. You will need it tomorrow. You will be attacked by the devil. You must learn the principles of warfare. And for four months, all you who all is just worship and God says, you will not even get a new song as a worshiper. Worshiper. Four months, no new song. And God is teaching you on warfare. And the devil can say, I hope you are not backsliding. God says, no, the songs will come when you give me time. But for now, is it not with money you will buy the keyboard? Learn what will help you set up the studio and you can lie down there alone without a landlord knocking your door. So Satan comes as an angel of light and says, have you stopped seeking God to seek things and that guilt will turn you back and time is going. I am telling you that voice that looks spiritual is Satan masquerading as an angel of light using the regalia of religion to stop you from learning the ways of God. Many of us would have been better spiritually now but because sincerely so, you wanted to seek God but you just I, I, this business seminar and business seminar prayer retreat, choose one is a prayer retreat. The Holy Spirit said go there for the business. But Lord I'm used to spending time at the back of my, my house. Is this not backsliding? And he says, no, I'm the one guiding you. And sometimes religion will draw you away. And then when those who were in that business session are now rolling on the floor, you will be around trying to look for who to help you. And your wife looks at you and says, what kind of God did you serve? That's the question many people are asking in our families. You were a reverend for 30 years. How did God work with you? That your life is such a failure. And the result is to blame God. This is what we say. Lord, you failed me. Lord, you failed me. I spent 20 years giving my life for you. 20 years. So you begin to love God and worship God every day. And then sooner or later, all those visions of the presence begin to diminish. And then God begins to say, sweetheart, it's time for you to start learning how to be a wife and a mother. Lord, let, let carnal things not distract me. I need your presence. God says, yes, he's a gentle spirit. But don't forget that you are going to get married. Learn the principles. And you say, no, 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 no. I don't need to. Your presence will give me everything. You say, yes, it's my presence that is now recommending my ways to learn. And that person will be a worshiper and a prayer warrior for many years until marriage comes. Then she gets married and the man returns by 6 o'clock. Sweetheart, where are you? And there's a song playing in the other room. And then the man says, what are you doing? Say, his presence. That's, that's, all, that's all I desire. So why did you marry me? Listen carefully. And then you now say, this man is a devil. He's out to destroy my life. And Satan says, thank you for giving me a jackpot in this family. He will wreck that family to pieces. The ways of God are his wisdom to guide you so that you can settle the things that pertain unto life. And then you can focus on him. I thank God for giving me this understanding. I am obsessed with balance. I've taught you again and again. Imbalance is as destructive as error and ignorance. This ministry, by the grace of God, we are where we are by the privilege of God's grace because of the understanding to navigate these seasons. I will never forget, uh, Ejimisi, and he will testify. 
you know because of the way God started those days with me and you know you know all those that were there a time came when God started teaching me these things even me myself I felt guilty because all I wanted was his presence I would go in the night browsing Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence enter in a cafe with my fluffy disc if I see anything that looks like Shekinah on an ark, I'm downloading it. I don't even want to know whether he's talking about, just download it. And then a time came when in a very strange way, the passion began to diminish. I fasted my life and I said, Lord, what am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this? And the Spirit of God told me, it's now time to learn the ways of God. I remember when I started proposing some of these things. Around those times, you know, I remember I suffered my own share of persecution. A lot of people just began to propose, this guy has backslidden. He didn't start like this. I'm no well, they didn't call me apostle then. I mean, somebody who will pray for hours now is sitting down. You are talking about finances. You are talking about leadership. These things are a sign of backsliding because if you are really, you should be fresh. I agree. And time. There are many people who were born again before that are not even born again again. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. Hmm. It's not the enemies that fight them. Hunger. Listen very carefully. If I ask all of you right now, and I say those who are really trusting God for a job, if you know that joblessness is pinching you and paining you, and you are angry about what is doing to your spiritual life, if I ask you to stand up, you'll be you will see those who they will stand up with the attitude. You will know they are really angry. Say, Lord, I've, I've, I've been serving you. What is all this one? That means something there is affecting your concentration. And I have a responsibility to show you the ways of God. And to show you fast. So that by the grace of God, we can spend time and spend our lives mentoring a generation on how to live. Listen to me. There are many things I've said that people have thought was pride. Some of them are now manifesting today. Micah chapter 4 is the prophecy for our generation. And that's one of the things that God is doing with this ministry. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Micah chapter 4, please. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. Verse 2 and many nations how many? many nations here don't just talk of countries they talk of systems shall come and say come no invitation no invitation come let us go up to where the mountain of the lord to where the house of the god of jacob that means the place of encounter but we are not going there just for encounter we are going there to carry over a course we ignored and he will teach us of his ways. The God of encounters. We encountered him, but we ignored his ways. But now we see a mountain that has both encounter and his ways. He says, come, he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. A day will come when the pride of men will fail them. A day will come when the imbalance of men will haunt them. A day will come when the inaccurate spiritual pathway that people are taking will show. And God is building an ark and telling you a flood is coming. When Jesus called the disciples, look at how he trained them. He called the disciples 
and started by doing a little introduction of himself then he stopped and started teaching them his ways let's go up the mountain and he teaches them the beatitudes the ways of the kingdom he taught them his ways so much that one day he said who am i who do men say that i am they say thank you because this thing has bothered us too we have learned how to be the light and soul but who are you John was so distracted, he forgot who he was. He didn't know that when you learn his ways, you go back to him. And he was offended. Say, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should we seek another? Do you not see that at the end of man's life, when Paul finished knowing his ways and did his exploits, he returned back that I may know him. It's a, it's a principle. Paul did everything. I, I've, I've learned them. He was in the wilderness of Arabia for 18 years. Learned the ways of God. When he was ready, he said, let's go. They killed him. He took himself back to life. And got up and finished everything. And at the end, he said, look, this is it. But Lord, that I may know your ways. Moses was at the backside of the mountain. The progression, an encounter. When he encountered him, God said, take your attention from me. Let's go to your rod now. This is about the one that's you. And Lord, I'm looking at you. Forget about the burning bush. You have seen me. But let me show you what you will do with this rod. And the attention went from the bush to the rod. And he trained him on that rod. He said, now stand up. Leave me. Leave the bush and go somewhere. You will come back. I will meet you again. But for now... He would have stayed there and circled that bush and said, I would die on this bush. Oh, your face, oh Jesus. When Jesus appeared unto Saul of Tarsus, he gave him an encounter. Then he says, go to the house of Judah. Wait there. Someone will come and begin to guide you on the ways of the kingdom. Ananias came and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. His eyes were open and he started learning by revelation. And when he learned at the end of his life, that I may know him. John the beloved started like the apostles knowing him and then later he learned his ways. By the time we get to the end of John's life it was full of encounters. This is the record that God has given us eternal life and he begins to talk about the divine life. Then in the Isle of Patmos I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw I have seen him again. He told me, you will see me again. I will come to you again. You need to know this about the progression of growth. It's a powerful secret. It starts with him. And then when he starts with you, a time comes. He says, now, just knowing my face is not enough to solve the matters that relate to life. Therefore, I will, like, like a... A preliminary course that you will take in another department for a while if you go to that department and remain there you are supposed to take the course get the knowledge and return back I don't want to spend my life even doing ministry because ministry is not an end is a means to an end the end is him Listen to me. This will help you to know why week after week we continue to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom. And every once in a while you will find out that we will have extreme moments where God's presence will come mightily and just interrupt the service and allow periods of extended worship just to remind us don't be distracted with the ways. And then he will step back again. Let the teaching continue. Those who follow that path are beginning to see certain results in their lives. You can have the luxury today to lock yourself and you and your children can serve the Lord. As for me and my house, he says we will serve the Lord. You will not serve the Lord when you are hungry because a borrower is slave to the lender. The rich will rule over the poor. Please listen to me. Many believers miss it at this point. They start well with God. 
and then when the holy spirit begins to tell them now it's time for us to move to begin to understand the ways of god they think sometimes it's an error no why should i buy a book on relationship i need books on his presence why should i buy a book on management why should i buy a book on church growth i need a book on heaven mine is just heaven and god says it's true but just calm down let me show you my ways lord i know you are going to call me and because of the encounter i'm having i will have a global ministry god says potentially that's true but that global ministry works on systems let me teach you something please just amplify can you change the sound i just need something i can hear listen help us holy spirit when joseph came listen joseph was the deliverer of israel I hope you know how Joseph delivered Israel. He brought systems that preserved that economy. Is that true? Joseph left them with a prophecy. He said, when you are going out of Israel, carry my bones. He was not just saying, carry my dead bones. The systems that kept you here, carry it along. Don't leave it behind. Bone stroke of systems and structure. There was something that happened that gave this thing structure over my leadership. I know God is calling you to go to a land thrown with milk and honey as his own people. But on the way, you will need the knowledge of this. Carry my bones. Carry it. Why, why will you dig a man? It's not because the land was cursed. No. Carry my bones. Carry those structures and those systems. So while... You are serving God and you see a book on financial intelligence. Don't throw it. Just keep it. A time will come as you are transiting. Let it be part of your library. For now, you are focusing on God. And God, you want to study a book on marriage and God said, no, 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 no. Let's continue the seven days dry fast. It will not always be seven days dry fast. All the movement of heat and cold in your body, it won't happen like that forever. It's a system. You are in a season where he's exposing you to himself. So all your prayer is full of visions. My hands are shaking. My legs have cold and heat. Carry the bones. You will need it. A day will come when the shaking will no longer be there. A day will come when you will not be falling around the way you used to fall before again. A day will come when for a strange reason the strength for 10 hours in prayer will not be there and you will search your heart and it's not backsliding remember that god must be the governor and the coordinator of your growth not religion you allow men they will delve you into error sincerely so i watch with shock and i watch with pain in my heart the way so many young people especially in africa continue to corrupt this part of growth they leave joseph's bones and when they get to the wilderness they do not know how to call for bread again are we together this ministry by the grace of god runs on systems and structures and it has afforded the opportunity to serve god and serve his purposes i can imagine the level of distraction that would come into my life if all i focused on was just his face and i ignored his ways let me tell you what we would have done by now i would have carried an offering basket and walk around and say i'm hungry i love god have you been blessed by my anointing yes Pastor Alpha, you all of you people here, it's one one million. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not as the spirit leads. It's not that I'm bad. This is how we carry over in life. A day will come when your wife will tell you, what kind of a man of God are you? And you will get angry. And all of a sudden, you will start choosing where to go and minister. There's one powerful campus minister. We can campus. How much are the students going to give me? Campus minister to many zealous but 
broke students and the spirit of God is saying I want to birth a revival on that campus but you look at your pocket and he says there is another ministration is, is happening in the US and I mean the, the, the priority service from Nigeria to US alone is enough to bless you there's no hearing God again and all of a sudden you leave those poor people and a revival is destroyed because a man did not understand the ways of God imagine that i went to honor ministrations today because of the honorarium they give it's a terrible thing you don't have to, you will be angry what of the ones that cannot give you anything but you know it was the will of god after you finish preaching you see what they give you and say how much is this? say it by yourself how much say sorry sir you see we were able to raise it you, you see it and that bitterness will choke the anointing out of your life I'm not just talking the area of finances alone. Have you not seen preachers that resigned from ministry because they could not be able to raise their children well? Sometimes they ignored the children. When God was saying, train up a child, they were hearing that word. They casted it. They were buying worship tapes. Bob Fitz, Don Moen. It's important. Don't get me wrong. And then while they were in the presence, Satan was with the children. That's what happened to the American society. When God teaches people certain things, he said, teach your children, write it. Your children will ask you questions. Make sure you teach them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This imbalance has punished a lot of us. I've seen men and women of God who organize meetings and after the prayer and fast members don't bring money they only bring vision sir I saw the meeting is success it is done and he said do you know how much the board that is say it is done sir I'm telling you I know what I saw and he will pray with you and go back and you stand there and say God did you call me or not and God says remember seven years ago when I told you to settle down and learn my ways you criticize me God and you criticize everything and because I respect your will I said all right you continue and now the deficiency of knowing that way of God is telling on you now so you are anointed you have encounters but you cannot build a church that works because you know nothing about leadership you thought it was unnecessary until while you are preaching someone is fetching the money of the church and you think that God is that dull to have allowed it happen. You're not knowing his ways. Then you find out that you never can be able to have up to 100 members. What is wrong? I'm anointed. I just came back from heaven. Members say, so what? You will continue going to heaven and coming back and finding out that there is no growth. Because something about the system is not there. So when Jesus was born at age 12 he was in the temple learning learning and then at age 30 he comes to be empowered and begins to do ministry and then he returns back to god from where he came it is god his ways god listen god his ways his ways does not mean you will leave him it doesn't mean you will not pray and you will not fast no but God because you are governed with time you cannot do everything at the pace you started and have the time to it takes time to learn you may pray 10 hours every day an instruction from God for five months but you do that that way you will not have the time for other things so you will find out that God has a system because even that did not happen by your strength and so God helps you. And then you begin to learn. The Holy Spirit says, go to a catering school. You say, God forbid. With all these visions I'm seeing. Until you see that it destroys your life. Son, I need you to learn. I don't want you to, to be an inefficient person. You have to learn the laws of greatness. 
and you say lord i'm going to the nations you are not going alone there are people there and not all of them are born again so he needs to teach you how to be a sheep among wolves lord i don't care all i know is that i'm going to be great apostle has said it we will all be great and we all know ourselves yes yes it's true but you must know his ways so here you are as a born again person and then you have the opportunity to meet a man a captain of industry and you do not know the principles of relationship you don't know the principles of friendship you don't know how to translate the reality of god's life to relate to a context and you stand there this is an opportunity to not just win a man but win an industry to christ you know him but you're not knowing his ways i love jesus nicodemus comes to jesus by night and says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him he would have said wonderful nicodemus said verily verily i mean jesus said verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again so on and so forth and when he led that nicodemus do you know that nicodemus was a secret follower of jesus he learned his ways he shall teach us his ways koinonia hear me you must understand the way God is training you. Sometimes you see us sit down and for over one or two months, all the emphasis is on finance and the rest. And sometimes I can almost discern that when these teachings are coming, here's the spirit of religion again. Two months teaching on money. is money everything. We, we need the presence of God. I see the joy on some of your faces as soon as I stand and I say, the Lord is showing me something. And someone is shouting, you know, people just, this is koinonia. Now, these are koinonia, not this backsliding version. And you keep allowing the spirit of religion. You see, a student does not define the curriculum. No, your job is to sit in the class with your heart open. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Listen, you will thank me for what you are learning. Because you will pastor a people who are balanced. After service, they have cars to go back home. They have houses that they can serve the Lord in. They have influence enough to bless the Lord. Yet in the midst of it, they will roll from pillar to post. Do not allow the spirit of religion destroy your peace. Do not allow the spirit of religion to corrupt you. Do not even allow the biases and the imbalances that we carry as men of God to corrupt the accuracy of your pursuit. There is only one architect who designs this pathway, Jesus himself, the author, the finisher. A lot of people see what God is doing in and through my life around the body of Christ. A man of God asks me and says, Apostle, you are a very strange man. There are different churches that you can go to and minister. How do they accept you? Is it that they don't listen to your message in other churches? For instance, maybe a very conservative church. I can finish a conference there right now. And the very next meeting may not be as conservative as. Is it that they don't know? It's not usual for people to receive guests like that. And I tell them there is something he taught me about the body. It's a mystery. Your results show what you know or you don't know. When the body receives you, there is a grace, there is knowledge that has come. This is what I'm teaching you. So you don't become a Christian that will, because of your imbalance, as a man of God, you join the campaign of fighting every other person too. Who are you for? Paul or Apollos? Are you seeing that now? And many of us have been raised that way, sadly. Oh, I am not this man of God. This one in this country is my papa. This one is my this. This one in my... And you join the campaign of fight. Whereas there is something you can know. And the gates of the body as an entity can be open for you. A 
Is God blessing you? This is what you are learning, my brothers and my sisters. You are learning principles. Principles. I bless the Lord for granting me the grace to be the one teaching you this. Because see, if I didn't walk in the anointing, it usually will mean that I'm trivializing those things because they are not captured in my life. That's why it's powerful to be balanced because your teaching will be believed. You have a system of defense for every dimension. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, I'm in Mina. Sunday, I'm in Mina. Monday, I'm in Abuja. Tuesday, I'm in Eboi. Wednesday, I'm in Eboi. I'm coming back on Thursday. Imagine, let's be honest, in the name of honesty, imagine if I had only two clothes and 10,000 naira for Chisco transport. Do you, I, 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 please, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, is this not, I just want you to think sincerely. Do you know how I will be forced to manipulate those people? I will carry the anger of my pain and say something God did not say. And preach something God did not preach. Not because I am bad. And then, here is the risk. All through the road in the night, 12 hours, you preach back to back, 12 hours. You are back, and then everything starts again. It's not a blessing. I can tell you it's not a blessing. You will never be able to have time to seek the Lord. Imagine that you want to have a Bible study and commit yourself and someone is quarreling and they are raising their voices and distracting you. You are in a vision, you don't even go far, you are back because the noise. Koinonia, let me tell you what God is making out of your life. You will love what you are becoming. You may not love the training now, but my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. God's integrity is back of what is happening to you. And a day will come, people will look at you and say, Sir, why are you such a man of God? What, what's responsible for the balance and, and the depth of efficiency? And you will tell them, Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength and let the rich man not glory in his riches. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. My journey starts with God, but I'm careful enough to observe the things that he's teaching me that will be responsible for my results and it will recycle time back to help me serve the Lord. There are times that I prepare an average of 18 to 20 sermons per week. 18 to 20 sermons per week. Aside from specialized sessions and counseling sessions. You ignore this that I'm teaching you. A day will come you will not have messages again as a man of God. And you say it does not matter. And then members will leave and you will call it an attack because you do not know the ways of God. They know not, neither will they understand Psalm 82 and verse 5. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. He said, but have I not said ye are God and all of you are children of the most high? He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. like you to pray you won't believe that I've not even started my sermon for this night I, I, I didn't even realize that the time had gone but I like you to passionately cry think of your children while you are crying think of those called to your destiny while you are don't be selfish it's about you but not all about you cry to the Lord 
Lord, I thank you for revealing a dimension of yourself. But now that you are teaching me your ways, give me the grace to stay. Give me the grace to stay. Lord, I thought the time that I've been spending in the last two years studying, I've even been afraid. Why are the visions not coming like before again? Now I'm learning that it's a season and a phase. It's not necessarily proof of backsliding. I have come to a point where you are working on me. You are giving me intelligence to be effective. Please pray. I want to inspire a generation to reflect you correctly. Abarada kata proska de balash, he brande gede la kato sada brahas kadabai. My children should not suffer while I seek you. My family should not suffer while I seek your face. It takes time to know you. Oh God, awaken me from slumber so that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. So that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. I don't want to spend my life chasing after mundane things. Chasing after money. Chasing after power. That at the end of your life, when you should be seeking him, you are now learning his ways. They that seek me early, early, they that seek me early shall find me. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. They are not information to those who find them. They are information to those who hear them. But they are life to those who find them. The kingdom of God is like a pearl that is missing. And someone lights a candle and begins to sweep that room. And when he finds it, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man finds gold in a property and goes to sell all he has to buy it. There are ways to redeem the time. Listen, let me tell you. Look at me. In the 60s and the 70s, nobody, people took jobs for granted right from 500 level or 400 level. You could come with jobs. Nobody knew that today will be an information age, a digital age that will replace jobs. So people had the luxury to not focus on some things. But times have changed. And the sons of Issachar, it, it, there is a generation of Issachar that had the understandings. The, the fact that God is not doing a thing the way he did 30 years ago does not mean he's, the one, he's not the one doing it. Listen, let me teach you this. For every dispensation, there is a strategy. When Samson, listen, when Samson saw the Philistines, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took the jawbone of an ass, a donkey, and he killed all of them. When he killed the Philistines, he looked at the bone and threw it. Why do you throw what works? I just used a strategy 
and defeated an army and yet I'm leaving it to wait for another one. Many of us will hold that bone and idolize it. And even when the bone has no life again, you will keep moving with it. One time he will tell you, let the people go through the water. Other times he will tell you, stand still. There is always a strategy for every generation. Don't borrow a strategy that is not applicable. Joshua had to wait. What is the strategy to bring down Jericho? And he said, this one is not about warfare. Let the priests lead the way. This is the strategy. There are times that the men of war would lead the way. There were times it was not just the priest, the worshippers. What is the strategy for this generation? Do you know? Or do you believe it's the same strategy for everyone? It's a joke. God, who in sundry times and diverse manners, spake to us through the fathers, hath in these last days, in these last days, spoken to us through his son, whom he has appointed to be heir over all things. So there was a time in sundry times and diverse manners he used a strategy but in these last days there is a strategy just because a strategy worked does not mean god is interested in using it again give us this day not give us once and forever give us this day for every day there will be a strategy oh elijah for a while it will be at brook cherith that's the strategy for your survival position yourself at brook cherith and a raven will come but the the, the brook is dried up elijah hear the word for another strategy otherwise you would die at brook cherith whereas god has relocated your blessing through another strategy you held the jawbone of an ass it killed in 1960. It killed in 1970. But the arsenals of hell changed their strategy. And we refused to go back. Because we learned the principles very slowly. And we ignored the presence. Many people are applying principles that do not have a corresponding power in the realm of the spirit. That is why the results do not show. I remember the time and I say this respectfully so when God told me I want to open your eyes to see the key to church growth I had not seen it I am look let me tell you something I have studied the largest churches in every continent with all humility the day I saw it I said this is it not the church growth of the fathers the church growth of the future the way they built the tabernacle in the wilderness was not the way they built Solomon's temple. The strategies are different. The goal is that he inhabits them, but the patterns are different. Listen to me. If you get what I'm teaching you, you will be blessed. There are people, generations past, could ignore certain things. But there are generations that if you ignore certain things, in the 60s and 70s, you could see a, a trader keep banana or something and not even be there. You would carry the banana, put it in the leather and drop the money there. But it says, the times, it says, the days are evil. Are we together now? Yes. You couldn't have somebody just come and cheat you and betray you and stab you for nothing because the pressure to make for that is not there but the hardship of men has helped them to invent wickedness didn't the bible tell you that the end times will be like the days of noah what characterized the days of noah wickedness multiplied and so you need the strategy you carry the naivety of decades past and you find out that you are on you are unfruitful to the church listen let me tell you this I will use names respectfully and honorably. Papa Ia Deboye represents the face of a generation. Are we together now? He represents God and a dimension of his workings to a generation. If I go to Papa Ia Deboye's generation, no matter, I've, I've ministered many, many times in those circles, and no matter how powerful my ministration is, the people love me, but they may not listen to my messages. 
because David served his generation are we together even if I cut promises head and carry it and put it back are we together now it will never stop anybody from crowding and camping around redemption camp I went for a conference recently and we had to route through another way because two major ministries were having a regular meeting and the entire road was blocked it was a strategy for that generation everyone that caught the strategy the results have to show there are others who passed and didn't get it it's very clear they didn't get it so we must stand like habakkuk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower god what are you saying for my generation what is the strategy for survival what is the strategy for survival there were no facebook's to criticize a man of God those days. But now, oh God, that is easy for darkness to attack a man. What is the strategy? Hmm. Are we together now? Yes. People were a lot more loyal in the times of our parents than our time. They can love a man no matter what is right or wrong. But our generation is a vocal generation. A lawyer can stand up and say you are stupid for thinking we are idiots. He will listen to you and after service he will analyze your message and sue you to court. Because you abuse my privacy. There were certain levels of um, being raw and outspoken that our fathers could afford in their generation. You try it now, you will die because you are speaking to nations they had the luxury to say certain things in certain ways you are not bending the truth you are receiving a strategy because you are speaking to people who are global in context and you must be able to translate divine realities to make meaning to a generation you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to those who are in your locality when Jesus came and found an agrarian society, he converted the realities of the kingdom into agricultural terms to relate to the then civilization and they understood. Listen to me. Ministry is not just about the anointing. There is a skill. There is a science. There is a psychology for effective ministry. It's much more than just having the ability to do an exegesis of scripture. It's a combination of many factors playing behind the scene. People don't just love you because you are telling the truth. Mm -mm. It is not just truth itself that saves. It is how it is presented. You can serve me water. Please help me with this. There are two ways to serve me water. Here is one way. Apostle, please take water and drink. You serve me water. The water is not wrong. But I will hate you because of your service. You did not serve it to present honor. You can do this to a footballer. In the football field. And he will not be angry. It's the ethic of it. In fact, the skill of receiving it will be an accolade. But now when you come to me. And you carry this and throw it. The same thing you did in the field that they clap for you. You do it here. They will curse you. You must understand the intelligence that comes with territory and systems. Oh dear, this is not a pastor's conference. Please sit down. In the name of Jesus, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. The spirit of this prayer and fasting is upon me. Ah. Second Peter chapter 1. Jesus. You know, sometimes when I come looking, which one do I omit? And which one just boils in my spirit? And I'm looking, which one do I omit? And which one do I say? Because I truly, truly want you to get it. Many of you will have churches in the future. You will see how exceptional your churches will be. Yes, yes, yes. The grace that is upon you is, is too much for a member no god is training you i mean no 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 no. this is not the grace that just keeps you you are representing a nation and a territory so you are listening for the sake of nations that might not be hearing now 
Second Peter 1. Help us, Holy Spirit. Verse 2. Let me just tie up something and we'll pray this night. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. Read with me. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Stop. Read it again and stop at things. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. So, let's reverse it. All things are given unto us according or by his divine power. Listen carefully. All things are delivered to the saints. How? Faith is only a connector to his divine power. The system that makes for reception in the kingdom is the agency of his divine power. As powerful as faith is, faith is like a funnel. Are we together? The funnel connects the container and the one you want to put under. So that's what faith does. Faith in itself does not produce miracles, does not produce breakthrough. Are we together? Faith, you know, is just your conviction and the action you take to validate that conviction. Are we still together? So the Bible says, according as his divine power. Let's walk this a little tonight. That means there are results. If I see arrive your life, the agency that made it so, regardless of what principle you obeyed, the principle only made way for his divine power. If his divine power cannot be released, there is no performance. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Let me give you an illustration. Look up, please, everyone. What is inside this bottle? Water. I, I hope you know that there are different ways to package water. Are we together? Now, let me interpret this. Every time you are thirsty, what quenches the thirst is water. How it comes may be different. Are we together now? Yes. It can be packaged in a bottle. It can even be packaged in, in you know, all kinds of ways. But if at all your thirst is quenched, the factor that quenched it is water. The bottle that brought it and the system of packaging is not the issue. Is that the central factor that quenches test is what? Water. So the Bible says, thank you. According as his divine power. Listen carefully. His divine power does not give some things. It gives what? That means you need to study what the Bible tells you gives all things according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness that means if i am not obtaining i am not engaging something that makes available his divine power listen 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 if i prosper his divine power hath given me prosperity there's a set of kingdom principles i engage but then when I engage them, what will come is still his divine power. In physics, we teach that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. I'm helping you prepare for jam tomorrow. <laughs> for those of you who are writing jam, you'll be surprised to find out that that's your first question. <laughs> Are we together now? But that it can be converted from one form to another. Are we, are we together on that? That means every time you see any manifestation of energy, it is the same energy. It is just different forms of it. That the same electricity can turn to power this and then can produce sound here that means if i hear sound energy made it so if this fan is turning energy I, I i get i get what i'm saying now and so regardless of what results you are looking for 
his divine power the way you engage his divine power for different situations may differ but that the factor that is responsible for giving the saints all things is his divine power the more of his divine power that works in me the more the possibility of obtaining all things become in my life are you getting what i'm saying now follow me carefully <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Spiritual understanding. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Popular scripture. Look up, please, and let's read. It's projected. One, two, read. Stop. Who is the him? God. So who has the ability? God's ability is not in doubt now unto him who is able to do uh -huh, abundantly above all that we ask or think stop he's about to introduce a condition that can make all what he just said to happen or not and the condition is according to the power that walks not lives not dwells according to the power that walks not according to the power that lives in us mm. the possibilities are not according to the power that you possess it is the dimension of the power that is released the power that walks not the power that lives not the power that resides listen to me that's why we can have the same power we can have the same anointing and our possibilities are different because of the power that works, not the power that is in you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, 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 the power that is engaged, the power that is produced in us. Are we together? We can have the same Holy Spirit. But the power that is released through sister A, brother A, may differ. Hence, they are actualizing the possibilities that God said would be. Many times I have found out the issue is really not more power. It is the grace and the understanding to activate the power that resides within you. They did not need to go and bring new bread and new fish. Something was done and that in itself was enough. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please understand this. It is according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power not lives in us. If God spoke that way, it would be unfair. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? We have been made to drink of the same spirit. But the dimension to which we have released the power of God and the investment of the spirit within us differ. This is the difference. So my possibilities and your possibilities may differ. The factor is not God. The factor may not even sometimes be the anointing. It is, I have done something to make a greater room for the power to not just live, but to walk in and through me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the power that we allow to find expression through us determines the possibilities that come. And there are many ways to make the power work in us. That's why we are spending these seven days. To give room. I'll just tell you two quickly and we'll pray. One way that you can cause the power to be at work in you. Is through enlightenment and transformation. The power of God is limited to your belief system. Your paradigm. I've taught you this according to the power that works 
that works that works i've given this example here some of our fathers great fathers of faith who lived in the 40s 50s and 60s many of them were heavily anointed but because some of them did not go to school some of them could not speak many languages are we together the limitation in their mindset did not allow the power of God invested in them to be fully manifest. Now, those fathers, as crude as they were, they now anointed other younger people with an enlightened mind, with intelligence, and you see the potential manifesting. Enlightenment and transformation is one way to activate the power that works within you. There are possibilities that will never find expression until they pass through an enlightened mind. We'll soon pray. Come, Sam. Please look up, everybody. Sam, in this example, is a mighty prophet of God with a great prophetic grace but Sam is not so enlightened in this example are we together so his understanding of the word is very very small or there's nothing there and then his general enlightenment in terms of knowledge in terms of the knowledge about life is small we both have the same anointing you are going to see that the possibilities that flow forth from our lives will be very different in spite of the fact that the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together now? Let me give you an example. Two of you, please come stand. Let's assume that this gentleman and lady, uh, husband and wife, are we together? Now, the Lord is revealing to me, watch this now. Sam can come as a prophet. The divine power is at work in him. And Sam can see a horn on this girl's head. What did he see? And he can see fingers like that of a witch. This is what his vision is telling him. There is no enlightenment to properly translate what he's seeing to the edifying of the people. So he will announce it from the limitation of his mindset. His sight was correct, but the divine power is limited. And he, can, he will just say, Madam, you are a witch and you are a devil. Oga, you married a witch and you've been smiling why will your business move forward and he can even recommend that the way forward is what this guy has misrepresented what god can do god can do better than that but because he is anointed but not enlightened there is so much power in him but very little is working are you getting that now? The only power that is allowed to walk is the power to see. The power to interpret is not allowed. Because enlightenment did not activate it. Now, this guy is still a prophet of God. But he will keep destroying marriages in his church, for instance. Are we together now? Now, stand again. I have the opportunity to now prophesy. And I'm not only anointed, I am enlightened. Meaning that I understand the systems and the ways of God. Are we together? The moment I see a horn on this precious lady, listen, I know that there is a difference between bewitching. There is a difference between being a witch and there is a difference between being manipulated by darkness. When I see this, my understanding helps me to interpret it well. And so I know that the problem is not this lady. She may be connected to something territorial that God is trying to show me. So I separate the influence from the person. Now more of God's power and possibilities can now flow by reason of my enlightenment. And by so doing, I can set this lady free. Are we together now? And then I can redeem this family. Still yet, I can even be more enlightened. And after I deliver them, I know that there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is preached. It's called deliverance through knowledge. It is not enough for this lady to be delivered from the spirit influences. I've taught you this. 
she must be reoriented to understand the ways of God to know who she is in Christ to help her understand the principles that make for victory three approaches same anointing his divine power he's able to do this according the power lives in us but how much of it works in you that will determine your result so when your mind expands more of the power of god can flow through you many times people come to me and they say apostle more anointing i say what exactly are you looking for say result i say do you really believe that if i pray for you they don't even listen they say yes sir just just do it and i say mm -hmm. how many people prayed for you a b c d did anything change no that means that you are like a tap that has refused to open they connected you to a dam but you have limited the water to come by drops are you seeing that now so you are wondering why a bucket has not been full even after two weeks because the water is limited to the opening if i can help you open the more you can fill the same bucket you don't have to change the reservoir that expansion and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that's why we need enlightenment just because we are spiritual does not mean we ignore enlightenment you can see how for instance god saves this marriage otherwise if this enlightenment is not there and i don't interpret it well this man will go you, do you think will you eat your wife's food if you hear that kind of blind prophecy with no interpretation and then she brings all kinds of things fish fish mermaids with fish say you now brought the one from the sea for me this night you would have even brought cow or something we continue to make a fool of god's power because the enlightenment that makes that power a blessing is the same thing like power coming from nepa or nitel are we together and then you have a wire just caught and somebody just touches it it was not channeled properly and so it is not controlled well this is it you can be a pastor heavily anointed but because of the low level of your enlightenment the power of god may not be able to flow did you know let me tell you something many dimensions of the spirit of god that is at work in my life is at work in the life of many people especially young ministers around and people hate them because there is the same anointing the interpretation and the system of dispensing that power has been refined through enlightenment so that i can let the power of god flow in a meeting and i can let it flow in a way and manner that relates to the thinking of that ministry hmm. there are people who are very intellectual and seeing the power of god flow like that may create a lot of controversy and so you need to come like paul from the standpoint of a scribe and a pharisee the anointing will have to follow the channel of knowledge you are going to have to conv to convince them by the soundness of theology and scripture that becomes the host by which that power flows they are able to receive it because the depth of your balance and your theological exegesis will keep them in awe and they will know that whoever must have received this level of intelligence this power must be of god notice how paul made his defense from city to city when he met ignorant people he just said this idol is the god you are looking for when he met intelligent people he said no don't call i'm a pharisee i'm a pharisee i'm learned everybody say enlightenment it's very important you don't go to talk to a team of business experts and and entrepreneurs and great people around and you just stand and say don't worry just use your heart right now as i'm speaking somebody is going to shout don't worry you will not understand you are unfruitful they will drive you out of that place you are anointed but you are short-circuiting the power because enlightenment has not allowed a greater dimension of the power to work in you are we together 
the second way you can allow this to happen is through prayer and fasting thank you prayer and fasting is a system that among other things principally deals with the issue of unbelief but it can expand your capacity in the spirit it is true it is true the disciples could not cast out a certain epileptic spirit and Jesus told them this kind that means there are many kinds this kind go ahead not accept listen listen don't argue with Jesus this kind go ahead not but by prayer and fasting there were certain people who bound themselves and said they will not eat until Paul died prayer and fasting there are, there are spiritual strategies that can allow more of the power of God that is resident within you to be activated and to be at work in you when a man sets himself to pray and fast it's not just starvation my brothers and sisters hear me there is no man I know or woman of God that is being mightily used by God with genuine power genuine power genuine power that is not a student of fasting and prayer is a joke there are certain spiritual loads you cannot carry until that stamina is there oh god give me give me and god says this thing will drop and crush you into pieces but when you get to the place of prayer and fasting it's like walking out you may not know the changes are happening to you but you just continue so while you are praying and you are fasting you are praying and you are fasting many things are happening and then you will see that there is grace you may not even know until the day you go for a meeting and they say brother can you come and share in this fellowship and you come as a brother your name is about to change you just stand and say can we all rise up to pray and you find out that people cannot stand up again what happened his divine power God is saying, you have given me more space. Now see what that more space can do. Let me tell you this. When I started out in ministry, we're going to pray. I noticed that certain sicknesses and diseases will never go. I never got testimonies in those areas. It bothered me for a while. I said, God, what is this? There are gifts of healing. Yes, I studied all of them. T.L. lost born. And at a point in time, I studied, I studied. You know, classifications of sicknesses. I studied all kinds of rabbinical writings, 39 straps on Jesus, 40 less one. I studied them and this thing was not working. Pregnant women were never getting pregnant. If I prayed, even me, I knew they wouldn't get pregnant. Yet I was anointed. How can people be falling under the anointing and certain possibilities were not coming? I said, Lord, what is the key? And then God called me and said, the anointing is there, but your capacity is small i said i know the key you would think you are not doing anything you just continue you are expanding your capacity a day will come you will look at that woman whereas you would have prayed before as if you are fixing the tire of a car sweating around a pregnant woman to get her pregnant if this thing is not there it's not there Jesus looks at the epileptic patient and rebukes a deaf and dumb spirit and it's done. So we can be singing praise and worship in this place and this brother is sitting on a wheelchair and I come, man of God, man of signs and wonders, just because you saw one or two things in a crusade ground, you don't vet your capacity, just say, in, in my name, they shall cast out devils. And you even have the effrontery to tell the man uh, you think you are get beautiful do you know how long these guys were coming at from the hour of prayer not not from from lunch the hour of prayer and you would call the name of jesus and say stand up and they're already clapping for you in advance and you leave the guy and he's shaking walk you guys say, I'm that good. will i lie and he just says sit down quietly let me tell you what went wrong please believe me it is never the power of God it is that 
the level of grace and anointing that needs to flow to correct that thing your capacity cannot carry it now many men of god will not be humble enough to receive this thing they will say this guy doesn't have faith it's a lie it's a lie i always take responsibility for miracles that don't happen And then as I began to stay with God the more, I started seeing certain possibilities. Newer testimonies and cases. I remember one of the most frustrating one was this HIV thing. That thing would not go at all. And the people who always tell, test themselves and let me know. Sai, it's still there. Oh. Of course, will, will the people lie? And I got tired. I said, no, something, there has to be something wrong. See, let me tell you, when you love God and love people, you will not excuse lack of results. They will draw you back to the secret place. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I said, Lord, there has to be a way. And the Lord let me know. There are many factors, but the anointing is there, my son. But the capacity is small. You have eaten away some space. Huh? Yes. The power is flowing and food just stands like a customs officer. And the power cannot flow. But by the time you trust God for grace to scatter the walls of gluttony and open up your capacity, you will not even know that that case is represented in your meeting. While there was a time I didn't just used to speak upon people and it would happen. This creative dimension of the prophetic, it was not there. It was not intentional. The results were not repeatable. Many men of God will not open up to you like this and share with you what I'm saying. Because everybody has his reputation. I would speak to someone. People would come and I cannot remember talking to them because I'm not, I didn't even expect it to happen. I just spoke at random. Maybe one minor case that was under your grace was quickly answered. But you get to a point where you can tell him, go, I know you will come back with a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, it is not the mouth, it's the spirit, it's the capacity. This is what demons see. When demons look at you, they don't see your head, your shoulders, your knees, or your toes. They see your spirit man. The largeness of your heart you may look tiny physically but boy they see what is there and you make one decree and you open up doors I thank God for the grace to do that today and I thank God for the levels that we continue to press because in this school you never graduate you just move higher and higher the day you graduate you, you, you plateau there and you go down When I have the privilege to pray with people, I didn't like praying with people before. I like praying alone with God, but not praying with people because of the frustration. The results were there, but they were not many. Just like it's happening to some of you. Man of God, can you pray for me? Say, let's pray. You finish praying, no results, no testimonies. Can you believe God that in these seven days that something will tear open in you huh? that there can be a capacity please help her a capacity a largeness of heart listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is the size that you carry in the spirit hmm, that determines your result i'm telling you this if i pour water on this cup it is only the size of this cup that can take. If anything outside that, it will just waste away. So sometimes it's not more anointing. It is, oh God, expand me. Expand me. Expand me. I'm tired of this level of testimonies. Headache, headache, headache here. And then all oh, my teeth. <clears throat> I, I need to shift nations. I need to stand and look over a family and say it has, it's, it has come to pass. Listen to me. If you're a man of God here, hear me. We're going to pray. 
make sure you keep vetting what you are doing. Don't keep going to people's homes and waking them in the night. Doing night vigil from 10 to 5. And then at the end of it, two weeks later, they tell you nothing has happened. You say, let's do it again. Please, don't frustrate people. If that grace is not there, go and work on yourself. There are some, there are some ministry publicity you should not do until you are ready. Healing service. Healing, healing, healing. Bring the sick. And we mock ourselves. 90 sick people come and only one person who is not even sure. He's not there. Abba. It's divine power. This ministry, you see my brothers and my sisters, is sitting on a large, there is capacity in the spirit that makes for this. All the people you see come, it's not just because they like a man, it's more than that. There is capacity. There is capacity. There is capacity. There are certain regions you don't do certain kinds of ministries and go scot free. The devil will attack you and destroy that ministry. I'm challenging many of you. You are anointed, but your capacity is small. Your results show it. Mm -mm. Your words don't have carry power. You, there's too much talk. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. We need to settle down. Get this thing for real. Get real spiritual power. I've already been setting myself during this prayer and fasting to say, Lord, there are, there are dimensions. There are dimensions. Look at the way you have kept your fellowship small because where you stopped is where the fellowship stopped. It can't grow more than you again. Look at where you kept your prayer group. Because you are small, you continue recycling mediocrity and clapping for yourself. Oh, you are MOG. You are this, whereas there are heights and virgin dimensions in the spirit. You know, let me tell you, when I see men of God sometimes and I see our pride, I stand and I wonder. I said, compared to what result? Where is the result? When there are still families crying, where is the result? How many times did you pray for people? Do you know when people drop prayer requests here more than once? When I sit down and I hear people saying, I dropped my prayer request January. I dropped my prayer request February. I dropped my, it does something to me. I'm not saying you should know. I'm saying, ah, did you have to drop it three times to be answered? That if you come for koinonia once, once, it's enough for your miracle. The rest should just be growth. Once, not twice. The next time is you bringing someone else. Enlightenment is good. But many of us, our capacities are small. That's why you finish fasting. And as soon as you finish your prayer meeting, as you are lying down, the spirits come back again. The spirits are testifying something. Apostle, I prayed three days. As soon as I was lying down, the same spirit that used to oppress me came back. Let me tell you, there is a level of fire. My brothers and my sisters hear me. Let me tell you, even a madman does not enter fire by mistake. Jesus prayed all night. How long? How long, please? Not all day. I've told you about the mystery of the night. Capacity. It takes a long time. So that you don't fool yourself. You just look at someone and feel you are falling down. I'm falling down. You are the same. It's a joke. It's a big, it's a serious joke. There are people who can speak over nations. I prayed and cried for that grace. I said, Lord, how there are regions that I may not have the opportunity to come more than once. Why should the people die? Capacity. This is the problem. It's too small. Too small. You are praying. Too small. You are speaking. It's too small. Laying hands. Too small. And so God cannot honor you. That grace is too small.
listen, it's time to come up here. Throw away the little, little results. Huh? Thank God for the small results. But my brothers and sisters, we need to delve into something deeper. Deeper. The grace to change climates and change territories. Not saying a lot of talk that we cannot defend. There are still ailing people. Is there no bam in Gilead? You are getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. Five over ten. Is that a pass? They invite you into a family. Serve you lunch as a man of God. Take care of you. Even sow a seed for you. And then they say pray for us. And you pray and nothing happens. The spirits just watch you and nod their head. And you prayed in Jesus name. Kai, somebody needs to be angry and say no more. No more. No more. Is it not a season of extraordinary fruitfulness? No more. No more. No more. Oh, 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 in your presence. Oh, 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 in your presence. Oh, 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 oh in your presence. apostle but there's nothing apostolic about me they call me prophet but there's nothing prophetic about me it can't continue like this is someone praying increase my capacity increase my capacity according to the power according to the power according to the power according to the power 
Thank you for yesterday's resolve. But Lord, I press to the challenges of today. Thank you for the healings of yesterday. Thank you for the miracles of yesterday. Thank you for the signs, the prophecy of yesterday. But Lord, I am dissatisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. You know you have entered a new dimension by the things that begin to answer to you. When I call you and you do not come, it's called dishonor. It means you do not regard me. So when you call healing at a dimension and it does not come, when you call breakthroughs at a dimension and it does not come, is the realm of the spirit answering you. You don't have the capacity to make that demand. Listen, you're going to cry for this, for staying power. It takes stamina and grace. These things are not easy in the flesh. It takes grace. It takes grace. It takes grace. Lift your voice and pray. The stamina, the power that stays, so God. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. The power that stays. Hallelujah. 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 Elijah was a man of like passion. Elijah was a man like us. One thing separated him. He prayed earnestly, not casually, not circumstantially. He prayed earnestly that there be no rain and gave the timing three and a half years. Had he said ten years, there will be no rain on earth for ten years. Not by the will of God, by the dictates of a man. The largeness of your capacity. The largeness of your capacity. I'd like you to open your mouth. Start to correct things in your life. Start to speak over things. I disallow, I disallow. I disallow, I disallow, I disallow failure. I disallow weakness. Is someone praying? I disallow oppression over my family. I disallow poverty. I disallow hardship. Shabas kaba shala kato zabra. Embre kato kaparato sesekete. Embre kato skabarada bashata. I disallow failure in ministry. It shall not be like before. I enter a new season. I disallow joblessness. Hallelujah. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Two more prayers and we're done. Lord, honor my life with strange results. Strange results. Whether you are a man of God or not, let it please you, oh God. Honor my ministry. Honor my business. A strange order. Notable results. Notable results. Notable financial results. Notable supernatural results. Outside, are you praying? Honor my life with strange results. Results beyond debate. Results beyond contesting. Results beyond argument. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Honor my church with results. Honor my fellowship with results. Honor my prayer group with results. Honor my family, my wife, my husband, my children. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to me. What are results? Supernatural workings of God's spirit. Possibilities that only God can produce. You are a man of God. You are a prophet. Your eyes are blind. Your ears are blind. You are not hearing, seeing anything. Abba. Listen, let me tell you this. The last prayer. You are going to say, oh God, make me dissatisfied with this current level. Listen, 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 listen. There are many of us, your spiritual growth process was corrupted when they started giving you honorarium from one ministration. Whether people are blessed or not, they say, take 10 naira, take 20 naira. They now invite you to one fellowship and you stop growing. Come on, please. Or when you started a church, Papa, Apostle Joshua Selman, and you stop growing. Oh, everybody's listening to your messages around the world. As child's play. You must get to a dimension where like Samuel, you are a man whose word cannot fall to the ground. Lord, the dissatisfaction that will push me to the next level, plant it in me. Plant it in me. Plant it in me. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. More than little miracles. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know, we know there's, more there's more that's found in you. It's 
in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know that's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know that's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. So why is favor not coming? There is a dimension of his divine power that needs to be released. Why are my meetings not characterized by the power and the presence of God? There is a dimension. There is a dimension of his divine power that is still missing. Look, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, I'd like you to, don't, don't be too soft on yourself within this period. You will not die. Carry something that the world will thank God on your life for. Don't, don't carry what will make you fight with others. Don't carry what will make you feel insecure when a man of God comes. No. God can grant you something solid upon your life. That your life becomes a praise to the nations. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Our time is gone. Listen. Please, let me encourage you sincerely. Whoever you love and you know, please let those, these seven days, prayer and fasting is not a koinonia meeting. This is a portal for the body of Christ to enter into dimensions of possibilities. No matter the sacrifice that God can grant you grace to make, there are families that have been tied down. And the good thing is that we are stretching it down and wrapping up with our miracle service for April. How can you become the same? How can you remain the same? Come with definite expectations. Your marriage, sit with your wife, sit with your children. What are the things that we must see, not may see? His divine power is able to provide it. In the name that is above all names, I pray for you that the grace and the anointing that it takes to stay with God until your spiritual capacity is enlarged beyond your current realm. I declare, let that grace be released upon you. The spiritual experience that you need to be subject to immersed into that will expand your capacity to release the power of God that is vested within you in the name of Jesus 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 the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I stand to declare upon you, upon your spirit man, in the name of Jesus, I declare and I speak upon you. May that grace rest upon you now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless you for tonight. We declare that forever your name be praised. 
your name be exalted in Jesus name please be seated if you can God bless you please be seated if you can hallelujah just help those under the anointing I want to make an altar call right now our time is gone there are people please let's minimize moving around there are people seated here some of you came for this meeting tonight for the first time and while I was teaching or while the worship was going on or any part of the service the spirit of the Lord was ministering to you and was saying it's time for your life to be right with God there is no coercion about it overflow three overflow two overflow one by the roadside those following online he say ye must be born again or there are others who are rededicating their lives to Christ you're saying apostle I've given my heart to the Lord but I see a need to rededicate my life I'm going to count one to five because of our time I want you to boldly stand up and come and stand right here aside from overflow three for time's sake i may just request that you walk to the front of your projector stand but overflow one overflow two the main auditorium quickly i'm counting one to five one let's celebrate them stand please for space two don't sit thinking about it it doesn't take a long time to know you need jesus three Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them. I've been around the things of God. And so I, I hope I, I'm born again, but I am not sure. Come and be born into a real experience. Not religion. A real experience. A real experience. There are still some of you sitting outside. You need to rush. Rush. If you are coming, run. Run and come quickly. I want to come but I'm ashamed of my friend. We came together. Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Are you joining them? A few seconds for you. And those online, your physical presence may not be here but connect. Come. Look at my dear children. Join them quickly. Young, old together. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I salute you, every one of you. You see, when you come to hand your life over to Jesus, you don't come as if you are receiving punishment. It's a joy. It's a gift. He's giving you a gift. And some of you are rededicating your life. He can always give you a new beginning. Please lift your right hand and say after me sincerely, Jesus is right in this place. Know that. He's here. And he's listening to you. Not all of you, but you. Say, Lord Jesus, I declare that I love you with all my heart. I have heard your word and I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for my sin. Tonight, I receive your life. The abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness i declare that from tonight i'm saved i'm a child of god i move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted jesus thank you for these ones young and old alike you have brought them you are able to keep that which is committed unto you against that day and so i pray oh god that you will keep these precious ones let this be a journey that will lead them into unimaginable dimensions of kingdom relevance. I bless you. I decree and declare that the grace to walk in victory is granted unto you. And I pray that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit in an unusual dimension from tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.